And for the headlines, weather forecast. Possible thunderstorms are expected next week due to Easter lease, according to Pagasa. Local news. The disputed water issue between COWD and Kobe has been escalated to President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Oka, City Hall officials should be declared persona non grata instead of Metro Park Kobe. 40,000 voters in the CDO Miss Or areas have been removed for the 2025 elections. Motorcycle passenger killed, two injured in Miss Or road crash. National News Depp had confirms plan to revert to the old school calendar. The Philippines has no law penalizing the leak of classified documents, says a senator. International News the death toll from floods in Indonesia has risen to 41, with 17 people still missing according to the disaster agency. Entertainment, Judy Ann Santos starts filming for The Bag Man. Kayla Estrada is not yet ready to work with her parents. Sports, Kiefer Ravenna and the Shiga Lakes make a comeback to be one while 30 Ravenna and Sun and exit the B League playoffs. Team Cone is hopeful that Japet Aguilar can play for Gilas in the Olympic qualifiers. International feature The legacy of Bob Ross continues in the new series The Joy of Painting. National feature The Cool Pals hosts a block party to commemorate their fifth anniversary. Trivia, the longest river in the world. Good morning, Philippines. Maganda umaga, Luzon. Nagmay Adla, Visaya, Subintanao. I am Athalia P. Sanyang. Weather forecast. Possible thunderstorms are expected next week due to easterlies, according to Pagasa. According to the State Weather Bureau's Sunday update, warm and humid conditions are expected across the most of the Philippines next week, driven by the easterlies from the Pacific. This could lead to potential afternoon or evening thunderstorms. Mindanao is anticipated to experience intense afternoon thunderstorms on Monday and Tuesday while northern and central Luzon may experience them from Monday to Saturday. Metro Manila can expect hot and sunny weather with possible afternoon or evening thunderstorms throughout the week. Additionally, a shear line may impact northern Luzon from Wednesday to Saturday. Weather forecaster Benison Estajera mentioned monitoring cloud clusters outside the Philippine area of responsibility, particularly in the intertropical conversion zone with a chance of low pressure areas forming during the week. Local news. The disputed water issue between COWD and Kobe has been escalated to President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. The Federation of Pre-Workers sent a letter of appeal to President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos urging the local Water Utilities Administration to investigate the controversial contract between the Cagayan de Oro Water District and Metro Pacific Water through Cagayan de Oro Bulk Water Incorporated. According to Attorney Proculo Sarman, FFW's lead legal counsel, it would not be just to penalize the people in District 1 if Kobe has not yet fulfilled its water supply obligations. They question the high water rates of COWD and the pollution issues stemming from water facilities neglecting environmental concerns. Concerns were also raised by the former city Archbishop, Archbishop Emeritus 
Antonio Ledesma of the Society of Jesus regarding environmental issues arising from Metro Park's water treatment facility. This prompted the group to take action to assist the Archbishop in addressing issues related to the controversial water provider of COWD. Sarman emphasized the importance of ELWA receiving proper funding from the national government under the General Appropriations Act to aid water districts affected by water crisis. FFW expressed disappointment with ELWA's handling of the situation as they have been slow to act on water crisis investigations, particularly in conducting feasibility studies to understand the root causes of the COWD Kobe contract dispute in the city. Oka, city hall officials should be declared persona non grata instead of Metro Park Kobe. More individuals from the city hall were declared persona non grata compared with the Metro Park Kobe company in the city according to former city mayor oscar moreno he criticized the alleged difficulties faced by the group of city mayor rolando clarex Uy in collecting payments from cagayan de oro bulk water incorporated or kobe for its obligations to the cagayan de oro water district or cowd despite accusations from Uy's allies moreno has not yet responded while Uy aims to resolve the conflict between COWD and Kobe regarding water rates. The mayor is pushing for a group of certified public accountants to reconcile the conflicting parametrics formula between COWD and Kobe, emphasizing no further interest in prolonging the state of emergency due to the water cut-off issue. In a recent special session, a resolution was passed declaring Metro Pacific Water and Kobe Persona non grata due to the water cut-off order issued on May 1. 40,000 voters in the city of Miss or areas have been removed for the 2025 elections. The Commission on Elections dug up over 40 million voters from the city and Miss Samis Oriental. After validation by the agency, it was discovered that these voters had failed to vote twice in the past elections. According to Provincial Election Supervisor Attorney Carlito Ravello, they conducted list cleansing alongside the approval of over 40 million applicants to become new voters for the upcoming 2025 elections in the country. The voter registration process in Northern Mindanao continues until September of this year. Motorcycle passenger killed. Two injured in Miss Or road crash. In a bloody tragedy in Poblacion, Subungkogo, Misamis Oriental, one back rider died while two others were injured. According to Misamis Oriental PNP spokesperson Captain Geraldine Botanas, the deceased was identified as Roy de Guzman, 28 years old, a resident of Barangay Kiraging in the said city. Based on the investigation, the motorcycle driven by Gilbert Ryan, 28 years old, suddenly caught fire, resulting in a collision with a motorcycle being ridden by Junric Babia, 20 years old. The de Guzman was Babia's back riders. We visited a different sublimation store and let's watch this. Ako day, si Justin Alangan. Ako nagtrabaho ka sa Cesar Buller. If gusto mo mag-visit dere, nara dere makita ninyo ang shop sa Agpa. Kilig sa Bikiri. Hmm. Hiling mo basketball. Kongkwan. Samot na yung anak. Mga, I think for team siguro. Tawad lang gitne. Mga, ah, wala pa sa nag one year ni nga parel. So, kanin nyo ang mga ko sa dapat set? Pwede mo. Pwede ra magpalit. If kwan ka nang, pwede ra up, pwede ra po down anak. Dipindi lang. Pwede ra sa inyo. Sir, Huwag magpahimu mo, huwag lang ka nang mag-message lang mo sa huwag na may huwag ng scissors bullers. Pwede lang mo mag-message po. Napo yung number sir? Hmm, Napo dahil contact number pero wala o kabalo lagi. Wala na yung lahing sila mo po ang sir ka nang dahil pa extension sila ng pinagahan. Na sila ay lain nga huwag doon ka siya pero huwag na to sa huwag na tiloring na yun. Diyan sa atbang sa pilgrim magsaysay na dara. Isang bowlers siya po, natin Loring. Napod sila sa kwan. 
makasandig padulong sa one in the hag na dara na sila shop dara sige sige sir sa may sa may kanang ipon mo sa mga mahilig sa mga basketball o katong mga mahilig sa mga bandara basketball if gusto mo magpatahi dire lang mo sa si search bowlers quality kay lang mga jersey napud sila i hoodie o mga polo shirt dagan pud sila ma'am pero kanay lang tailoring sir dugay na na or dugay na ni ma'am mga i think 2020 mga siguro kanila ang ilang kanila ang ilang bago na kaning apparel Kung so, dagan silang trabaho sa so ilang telo ni Silbe advertisement ra bitaw kanina ni na. So una po sila discount sir panimbawa na pulo ang kaon. Oh ay nana ma'am example for example na nang magpatay sila og set nana. If abot sila og 15 nana na sila isa ka free. Isa ka set nga free. So usa lang ni babae o pwede po pwede po sa babae. Wala may kana sa mga volleyball jersey. Naapod, naapod, na nanitanan ma'am.
National News Depp had confirms plan to revert to the old school calendar. The Department of Education has affirmed its intention to return to the previous school calendar. During a session of the House Basic Education Committee, Leila Ariola, Director of DEPS Bureau of Learning Delivery, disclosed that the 2024-2025 school year will commence on July 29 and conclude on March 31, 2025. With the aim of starting the subsequent school year, 2025 to 2026, in June. Ariola also mentioned the possibility of folding classes on select Saturdays, pending consultation with parents, teachers, and students to cover missed competencies due to the shortened school year. House Basic Education Committee Representative Roman Romulo commended DepEd's proactive stance, acknowledging the challenges faced by students and teachers due to extreme weather. Vladimir Kretua, chairperson of the Alliance of Concerned Teachers, welcomed the return to the old calendar but expressed reservations about weekly Saturday classes, suggesting they be alternated initially to avoid overburdening teachers and students. Ariola assured that consultations will be conducted before finalizing any decisions. The Philippines has no law penalizing the leak of classified documents, states a senator. Senator Francis Tolentino revealed that the Philippines lacks legislation specifically penalizing the leakage of confidential government documents, citing circulars from 1964, 1968, and 2007 as the only existing guidelines. He emphasized that while administrative sanctions exist for such leaks with government agencies, civilians are not covered by these measures. Department of Justice Undersecretary Raul Vasquez echoed Tolentino's statement, highlighting the absence of laws regarding classified information. Valentino also noted the inadequacy of current regulations in addressing leaks via digital platforms. To address this gap, Tolentino proposed Senate Bill 2667, known as the National Security Information Clearance Act. Meanwhile, former Executive Secretary Paquito Ochoa missed another Senate hearing due to COVID-19, prompting Senator De La Rosa to issue as a sub buena if he fails to attend within a week. De La Rosa cited Ochoa's relevance to the investigation, particularly in light of allegations from former PDEA agent Jonathan Morales regarding Ochoa's alleged involvement in halting an operation. However, Senator Jingo Estrada cautioned against giving undue credence to hearsay evidence. International news, the death toll from floods in Indonesia has risen to 41, with 17 people still missing, according to the disaster agency. The death toll from flash floods and cold lava flow in western Indonesia has climbed to 41, with 17 individuals still missing, according to a local disaster agency official speaking to AFP on Monday. Ilham Wahab, an official from the West Sumatra Disaster Mitigation Agency stated that the, the number of fatalities rose from 37 to 41 overnight, with rescuers continuing to search for the missing individuals. Heavy rainfall on Saturday evening triggered flooding in two districts on Sumatra Island, endangering thousands of residents as ash and debris from Mount Marapi cascaded down its slopes. Agam and Tana Datar districts were the hardest hit, with 3 and 14 individuals missing, respectively. The floods inundated roads, damaged mosques and houses, and swept vehicles into nearby rivers. 
despite the severity of the situation officials encourage affected local to seek refuge with relatives rather than in evacuation centers indonesia frequently experiences landslides and floods during the rainy season with deforestation exacerbating the Im impact of natural disasters as seen in previous incidents in 2022 Got. Entertainment Judy Ann Santos starts filming for The Bag Man. Actress Judy Ann Santos and comments filming for The Bag Man as part of her television comeback, as announced by ABS CBN over the weekend. Santos will portray the role of the country's president alongside Arjo Ataide and John Arcila. The series is a collaborative effort between ABS CBN International Productions Incorporated, Nathan Studios. Incorporated, Rain Entertainment, and Dreamscape Entertainment. Atide recognized as the best actor at the 2020 Asian Academy Creative Awards for his role in the original Bad Man, returns as Benjo Malaya, a convicted prisoner and former governor who is compelled to re enter the criminal underworld after receiving tragic news about his missing family. In this season, Malaya takes on a new mission as a bad man for the Philippine president to prevent a looming civil conflict. Kayla Estrada is not yet ready to work with her parents. In an interview, Kayla Estrada confirmed that she is not yet ready to work alongside her parents, Janice de Belen and John Estrada, who are renowned stars in the entertainment industry. In her latest vlog conducted by Oji Diaz, Kayla shared that she still feels nervous about working with her parents. There's the factor I feel shy about it. Right now, I can't imagine it. Maybe because I'm afraid of making mistakes in front of them. I think that's part of it, said Kayla. She mentioned that she needs to gain more experience and confidence in her career before joining her parents in work. Recently, Kayla was praised for her acting skills in the series Lin Lang alongside veteran actors such as Maricel Soriano, J.M. de Guzman, and Paolo Avellino, as well as the lead star Kim Chu. Sports Kiefer Ravenna and the Shiga Lakes make a comeback to B1, while 3D Ravenna and Sun and Exit the B League Playoffs In the 2023-24 Japan B League B1 and B2 Playoffs, the Ravenna brothers Kiefer and 3D experienced contrasting outcomes. Kiefer alongside the Shiga Lakes secured their return to Division 1 after defeating the Yamagata Weavers 97-74 in the B2 semifinals. He contributed 13 points, 4 assists, 4 steals, 2 rebounds, and 1 block, leading Shiga to a B2 final showdown against the Koshigaya Alphas. Meanwhile, 30, playing for the Sun and Neo Phoenix, suffered a 69-66 loss to the Hiroshima Dragonflies despite his 13 points, 6 rebounds, 3 steals, 2 blocks, and an assist. Sun N's elimination from the playoffs marked the end of their successful elimination round campaign. On the other hand, Hiroshima advanced to, se to the semifinals where they will face Ray Parks Jr. and the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. Parks Jr. contributed 5 points and an assist in the Diamond Dolphins. 84-71 victory against the Seahorses Mikawa securing their spot in the semis. Team Cohn is hopeful that Japheth Aguilar can play for Gilas in the Olympic qualifiers. Gilas Filipinas is gearing up for the 2024 FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament in mid-June, aiming to secure a spot in the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. However, the team faces challenges, including injuries to key players like Jamie Malonzo. 
Coach Team Cohn is eyeing veteran Japheth Aguilar to fill the void left by Malonzo's absence. Aguilar's familiarity with the system and his leadership qualities make him a valuable asset. Despite Aguilar's responsibilities as a father, the team hopes he can join in the lineup. Additionally, there's positive news on A.G. Edu's recovery from a torn meniscus as he is nearing the end of his rehab process. Gilas will undergo training in Laguna before heading overseas for tune-up games ahead of the qualifiers. International Feature The legacy of Bob Ross continues in the new series The Joy of Painting. A TV series teaching the Bob Ross painting method featuring unseen works from the artist's final season. From the artist's final season is set to inspire a new generation to create happy trees and embrace happy accidents. Stored away from nearly three dec decades, seven paintings completed by Ross before his death in 1995 are now being painted from scratch by certified Bob Ross instructor Nicholas Hankins in The Joy of Painting with Nicholas Hankins, Bob Ross, Unfinished Season. The series, airing on American public television and available on PBS website, aims to fulfill Ross' wish of spreading joy through his art. Hankins, who also contributes his own paintings to the show, hopes to provide viewers with a relaxing experience reminiscent of the original episodes. As interest in Bob Ross continues to surge, Hankins invites viewers to unwind with a tall glass of iced tea and immerse themselves in the tireless art of painting. National Feature the Cool Pulse hosts a block party to commemorate their fifth anniversary. The infectious humor of Filipino stand up comedy ensemble, The Cool Pulse, could go unnoticed as they celebrated their fifth year in podcasting with a lively music and comedy event at 123 Block in Mandaluyong City. Comprising GB Labrador, James Caraan, Nonong Balinan, Ryan Rams, and Muman Reyes, all of whom were already renowned for their comedic talents through Comedy Manila, the group drew thousands of fans who donned their signature t-shirts and merchandise. The event featured performances from various artists, including John Noy, Danau, Tanya Markova, Dilau, Queen Yasmin, Eloisa Hailoni, and Lion and the Scouts showing unwavering support for the cool pals. Balinan expressed astonishment at the overwhelming support, highlighting the group's journey from humble beginnings live streaming in Labrador's house during the pandemic to now dominating the Filipino comedy scene with their podcast on Spotify. Looking ahead, the Cool Pals are venturing into vlogging and aiming for international recognition to further promote Pinoy stand-up comedy. Last year, they celebrated their anniversary with a show at Soler Resort in Paranaque. Trivia, the longest river in the world. The Nile holds the title as the longest river globally, originating from Lake Victoria in East Central Africa and stretching a remarkable length of 6,695 kilometers from its farthest stream in Burundi. Meanwhile, the Amazon, recognized as the second longest river, flows into the South Atlantic and has a length of approximately 6,750 kilometers if considering its most distant mouth, the Par Estuary. However, determining which river is longer depends more on definition than mere measurement. 
not until 1971 was a genuine source of the Amazon revealed, located by Lauren McLintyre in the snow-covered Andes of southern Peru, starting with snow-bound lakes and brooks, eventually converging to form the Apure Remark. It further involves into the In, Tambo, and Ukaili rivers. Finally, from the confluence of the Ukaili and Maranyon rivers, the Amazon extends for the final 3,700 kilometers through Brazil into the Atlantic Ocean, characterized by its multiple mouths, making the precise endpoints uncertain. And that's the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinoy Rob News Channel, Tagayan de Oro. I request once more to support and subscribe and turn on notifications for more updates and more info. Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.